Today, I'm creating the strongest character that ever lived in the Demon Slayer universe. If you think Yoriichi is strong, you have no idea about the character I'm about to create. This character will not only be stronger than any character that came before him or will ever come after him, he will literally not be comparable with anyone in Demon Slayer. But before we begin, just to make this a bit more difficult, a small rule. We can only use a trait from a character just once. So for example, if we choose to go for Inosuke's breathing form, the beast breathing, then we will not be able to choose Inosuke again for another trait like his strength, speed, or intelligence. Okay, so let's start with the very basic now, shall we? What race will our character be? Well, the answer to that is pretty obvious, right? The demons are a cut above humans when it comes to all attributes. They are physically stronger, faster, they can regenerate, they have more durable bodies, tougher skin, they barely age, and the strongest among them even have access to their own unique blood demon art. So instead of deciding what race our character will be, let's just ask the following. What rank in the 12 demon moons will our character to occupy. And remember, we can only use each character once. Well, again, the obvious choice would be go for the place of the Demon King, right? But which of the two should we choose? The answer to that is obviously Demon King Tanjiro, for the simple reason that his Demon King form is not just an imperfect Demon King, but rather a full 100% perfect Demon King that is immortal and immune to both sunlight as well as having the ability to regenerate injuries caused by Red Blade and Sun Breath attacks. Although not confirmed, it is only logical to assume this was the case with Tanjiro as the reason Muzan was not able to regenerate these injuries had to do with the fact that they were related to his weakness, aka the sun. With Tanjiro not having this weakness, it's not far-fetched to believe that he was not affected by them the same way Muzan was. Now, this was just the first point, and we still have another 15 traits left to analyze. And for the 16th trait we saved for last, well, all I'm gonna say is that it changes everything, as that will be one of the most broken traits for someone to have in Demon Slayer, especially when you consider the rest of the attributes our character will have. So, let's move on. We chose his race, but how about the more technical aspects of his character? Let's give our character the talent of someone. Here, the first option is none other than Muichiro Tokito. You see, Muichiro Tokito is considered among the most talented characters in the world of Demon Slayer. During his fight with Kokushibo, the Upper Moon One Demon could not stop praising him all the time for his refined and highly advanced sword-wielding abilities, as well as the proficiency he displayed in breathing forms. Rengoku noted that despite he himself being considered highly talented, he could not even compare to the talent Muichiro possessed. I mean, the guy was the youngest Hashira for a reason. Did I mention that the guy became a Hashira just two months after first picking up a sword? However, we all know of a character that is obviously more talented than Moichiro. This is none other than Yoriichi Sugikuni, the progenitor. Yoriichi was so talented that he was literally born with both a Demon Slayer mark and Transparent World. When he first picked up a sword, and even more than that as a child, he was already far superior than even the masters that were meant to teach him. He single-handedly developed the breathing forms and was capable of using the strongest form of breathing, sun breathing. Plus, while growing up, he also developed both selfless state and another ability called Bright Red Nichiren Blade. Plus, he did not just develop the breathing forms from scratch, he also developed this unique subscribe button that only true anime fans can press. Since Yoriichi made it specifically for you, don't be shy, give it a go. But seriously, this guy was so strong that he had Muzan running for his life and literally having nightmares about their encounter for literal centuries. Our choice is pretty obvious. We give our character the talent of Yoriichi, and because of that, our character now has access to a breathing form, transparent world, selfless state, and red bright Nichiren blade. We are off to a great start. And for the third trait, let's just give our character a breathing form. Yeah, I know we already used Yoriichi for talent, so we can't use him again for sun breathing. So what now? Well, it seems like you're forgetting one very crucial detail. There are more known users of sun breathing throughout the years. The complete list includes Yoriichi Sukikuni, Kamado Tanjiro, Kamado Tanjiro, and Kamado Subiyoshi. Since we already used Yoriichi and Tanjiro, we can still utilize Tanjiro's father, Tanjiro, in order to acquire the same breath we were after, sun breathing. This form, when perfected, allows the user to never exhaust themselves no matter how long they move, making it such that they can seemingly dance forever. All other breathing styles are derived from it, as a result of Yoriichi Sugikuni modifying it to suit the individuals he taught who were unable to use it. In other words, the rest of the breathing styles are nothing more than a cheap imitation of the original sun breath, and that should really tell you how much stronger sun breath is when compared with the other breathing forms. I know, our character is already already the strongest in the Demon Slayer universe, right? Hold on, because we are just getting started. Being a Demon King, let's give our character a Blood Demon art. Now, there are quite a few really strong ones to choose from, so let's just mention the strongest. The first we are considering is none other than Nezuko's Blood Demon art, Combustible Blood, which allows Nezuko to combust her blood into pink-colored flames at will. Her flames have a special property which makes them only harmful to demons. Although great against demons, I think there's better choices. The second Blood Demon art we consider is Enmu's, 
sleep inducement. This blood demon art allows the user to forcefully put opponents to sleep. However, as we saw, certain skilled individuals like Rengoku and Tanjiro can counter this ability. Since we want our character to destroy all weak and strong opponents alike, we should again probably consider other options. The next in line is Goma with Cryokinesis. This blood demon art allows the user to generate ice and frost from their flesh and blood and spawn it anywhere in the vicinity, as well as manipulating it at will, allowing them to unleash incredibly potent ice techniques. Additionally, the ice created from their blood demon art is extremely lethal to those who inhale it, causing the cells of the victim's lungs to die and rendering them unable to breathe very quickly. Okay, so now this blood demon art is definitely a great candidate. The next we consider is Kokushibo's Crescent Moon Blades. This blood demon art is mostly complementing Kokushibo's moon breathing, allowing him to create and manipulate dozens of sharp blades, shaped like traditional crescent moons from his flesh katana. But since our character does not use moon breathing, even though this blood demon art is incredibly strong, for now, Cryokinesis is the main candidate. Now, here we could consider Muzan's Biokinesis that grants the ability to manipulate the body at will and shapeshift instantly. Although all demons have the innate ability to manipulate their flesh, Muzan takes it to a new level, possessing the ability to change his appearance, flesh, and organs at an unparalleled level of speed and precision. However, I'm reserving Muzan for another trait. Having said all that, there is one more blood demon art that I believe would fit our character even better. This is none other than Hantengu's Emotional Manifestation. This blood demon art allows the user to split themselves into multiple emotions in the forms of clones. That, although, yeah, the clones are arguably weaker than the original, this is nonetheless an insane ability to possess. If it's 1v1, this ability makes it practically impossible for our character to be defeated. As for the user of this blood demon art to die, the opponent needs to behead all clones at the same time. Although debatable which blood demon art would be better, I lean towards giving our character Hantengu's blood demon art over Domas. Let us know if you agree with this selection in the comments down below. Moving on, we have the trademark ability of all strong demons, regeneration. Here, there is an obvious choice that excels for his regeneration ability, and thankfully, we have not used him yet. This is none other than Muzan. I mean, hear this. As the Demon King, Muzan possesses the fastest and most advanced regeneration out of all demons, recovering so fast that it appears as if the attacks phased through him, and he was never injured in the first place. The only thing that could harm Muzan was Red Blade, Sun Breath, and the Sun. But having made our character immune to sunlight, we practically now are both invincible and immortal. For the sixth trait in our list, we have physical strength. Now, here we believe there are two prime candidates. The first is Akaza, that was literally fighting with his bare hands. He also displayed an ability where he was basically punching the air with such strength that he could literally create air shockwaves. It is true, however, that this might have been part of his blood demon art rather than pure strength. But no matter what, I do believe that our next candidate is even stronger. This is none other than the stone Hashira, Yomei Himejima. This guy is literally 2.2 meters tall and has arguably the best level of physical strength in the entire Demon Slayer core. Most notably showcased when he is able to easily lift and swing his massive spiked flail and axe constructed from pure iron at speeds faster than the eye can see. Now, an ability just as important, if not more important than strength, is of course speed. Here, the obvious choice would be, of course, Yoriichi Sugikuni. However, we already used him in the video, and because of that, we still have another three exceptionally fast characters to consider. The first is Zenitsu. While in sleep mode, the guy is a literal beast. He moves so fast that he actually never lost while being in sleep mode. His move Thunderclap and Flash Godspeed is, as the name suggests, inhumanly fast. It wouldn't be an overstatement to say that while active, Zenitsu comes close to Yoriichi's speed. Now, the other candidate we should consider for speed is none other than Kokushi. Shibo. Kokushibo possesses immense levels of speed, far surpassing that of the other upper ranks, as first shown when he slashed off Akaza's arm before he, or any other demons present, realized. He displays his phenomenal speed on multiple occasions while fighting. Firstly, he is able to effortlessly outpace Moichiro's mist-breathing techniques. Moving so fast, he appears to teleport. Moichiro even remarked that Kokushibo's speed was in another dimension compared to his own, despite his abilities being amplified by his Demon Slayer mark. The third choice is Sanemi, which once again was inhumanly fast, but I do believe the first two choices excel more for the speed compared to Sanemi that was basically more of a well-balanced combatant, having all skills honed to almost the maximum, unlike Zenitsu, for example, that his main weapon was his unparalleled speed. Having said all that, should we go for Zenitsu or Kokushibo? Well, I will be taking Zenitsu here, solely because I reserve another trait that I would like to take from Kokushibo. Moving on to the eighth trait, intelligence. Yeah, this obviously goes to Inosuke. I mean, who else, right? <laughs> <laughs> now, nah, seriously now. The first candidate is Tomioka, that was noted to be exceptionally smart, even among the likes of the Hashiras, that excel for not only their strength, but their intelligence as well. He always remained calm, composed, focused on analyzing
analyzing the situation and reacting accordingly. However, there is one character that is arguably smarter, and that is none other than Tamayo. You see, what Tamayo lacks in combative prowess, she more than compensates for with extremely honed skills in the fields of medicine, possessing the skill to alter her own body so she could survive on only a small amount of human blood. Throughout the fights, she developed all kinds of medicines and poisons that were proven crucial in defeating powerful demons like Doma and Muzan. This knowledge in crafting poisons can prove very useful in battle. Having said that, intelligence would mean little if our character did not know how to properly fight. Because of that, we now have to choose someone for battle IQ. Now, the best candidates would be Tobioka, Rengoku, Akaza, and Kokushiba, since, again, we already used Yoriichi. When it comes to Tomioka, as we already analyzed, his intellect is one of a kind, the same of which applies to Rengoku as well. When it comes to Akaza, his battle instincts were exceptional, but were they second to none? Not quite, because the Upper Moon 1 Kokushibo has by far the highest battle IQ among the candidates we just mentioned. Just by looking at Moichiro, Kokushibo was able to tell all kinds of things about him, like his fighting style, ancestry, and all sorts of things. Being the oldest demon we know, aside from Muzan, he had centuries of work under his belt filled with battles and combat experience. And having learned from the best, aka Yoriichi, choosing him for battle IQ is by far the best choice. Having covered battle IQ, let's now decide on sword wielding skills. Once again, Yoriichi, Tanjiro, Kokushibo are all out, as they've already been used so far. This leaves us with pretty much all of the Hashiras except Gyomei that's also already used. But since Gyomei does not even use a sword to begin with, it's not a problem. Which is our choice here then? Moichiro Tokito. Not many people are constantly complimented by Kokushibo for the refined and elegant way they wield their katana. If we assume that our character has all the traits so far covered, then by adding Moichiro's sword skills, our character becomes even more broken. Okay, for the 11th trait, we have flexibility. And before you rush into an answer, hear me out. I know the first thought that comes to everyone's mind is Mitsuri, and truth be told, she was indeed known for her flexibility and swiftness in battle. After all, we know that her muscles have a very special composition that allows for higher strength and flexibility than usual. Having said that, what if I told you that one specific character is even more flexible than Mitsuri? I mean, Inosuke can literally dislocate his joints and even rearrange his friggin' organs in order to pass through obstacles that normal people could never hope to do. I mean, check Inosuke passing through this passage, and tell me if you think Mitsuri could do such a thing. Because of that, we take Inosuke's flexibility. Even though flexibility is important, something even more effective in battle is agility. Now, this is something that Mitsuri 100% excels at. Mitsuri has been noted to possess an extremely agile body, allowing her to achieve a wide range of motion in a very swift and flawless movement. She has incorporated her innate agility into her love breathing techniques, successfully using it to outpace and counterattack Sohakuten's techniques without much trouble. Mitsuri's superhuman agility is also displayed in the form of her whip like Nichiren sword, which is also incredibly flexible and can bend in ways other swords cannot. Even if we were to leave our character there, he would still be the strongest character in Demon Slayer, right? But let's keep it going and give our character the superhuman stamina of the character I will describe next. You see, Akaza is known for his unlimited stamina and endurance. Even though all demons are known for their prolonged stamina, Akaza takes it to another level, seemingly having an unlimited reserve of energy. Akaza possesses infinite stamina and vitality, never tiring and always remaining in optical, physical, and mental condition, as well as being able to endure waves of onslaught as if it were nothing, as displayed during his fight with Rengoku. 13 traits down, three to go! And the next trait in line is Fighting Spirit. Now, even though all Hashiras excel for this, I believe the main candidates are the following. First candidate is Tengen Uzumi. Despite having his arm cut off, being poisoned, and having lost an eye, my guy was still going beast mode against Yutaro. He carried the entire team and never even considered giving up, or that there was a chance they would actually lose. The second candidate is Obanai, that in the final arc, we saw his body being absolutely destroyed. He was literally blinded, and under different circumstances, all those injuries should normally have rendered him unable to move. But what did Obanai do? He kept charging at none other than Kibutsuji Muzan, all the same, not giving him a moment to rest. The third candidate is Gyomei Himejima, that similarly to Obanai, he kept going for as long as he had to in order to ensure the Demon Slayer's victory in both the fights with Kokushibo and Muzan. As a testament to this, they both died after Muzan was defeated. And finally, the fourth candidate is none other than Rengoku Kyojiro. In his fight with Akaza, he kept going for as long as he needed in order to protect everyone on board of the Mugen train. Despite knowing he would die, he never stopped fighting, and despite being literally punched through the stomach, his strength was so massive that he still managed to immobilize Akaza to the point that the only way out for Akaza was to cut his own arm. So, which of these four do we 
choose. For Gilmei, we already used him once in the video. For Obanai, we reserve another trait for him. So the question is, who is the best candidate between Rengoku and Tengen? If I had to choose, I would probably go with Rengoku for the simple reason that Tengen retired after his fight with Yutaro, while Rengoku kept going all the way to the end. For the 15th trait, we have durability. Given the characters we already used, this leaves us with just two candidates, Inosuke and Obanai. For Inosuke, all I will say is that the guy was literally stabbed in the back, and yet behaved as if nothing happened moments later. While for Obadai, as we explained, the feats of durability he showcased during the final fight with Muzan were truly impressive. If I had to choose, I would probably go for Obadai. And now we reach the final trait for our character, the special ability. Here, we should explain that we only consider abilities that are not part of a blood demon arc, since we already reserved a spot for that ability. The most important special abilities are the following. Number one, Zenitsu Sleep Mode, that allows the user to get insanely more powerful while asleep. Number two, Inosuke's Radar Ability, that allows him to scan the environment. Number three, Nezuko's Size Manipulation. Number four, Nezuko's Sun Immunity would be a choice, but since we already used Tanjiro for that, this is no longer needed. Number five, Muzan's Psychic Connection, that allows him to connect with his demons. Number six, Yomei's Repetitive Action, which in essence is the following. By repeating a set of predetermined movements, the user can constantly raise their concentration and thus draw out all the physical powers of the body for a long period of time. Number seven, Inosuke's Poison Resistance. Or number eight, the Hand's Demon Ability to Grow Multiple Arms. Given the nature of our character and the overall traits he possesses, I would have to choose the Hand Demon's Ability to Grow Multiple Arms. Imagine being so strong, fast, being able to use Sun Breathing, Mark, Selfless State, Red Blade, create clones of yourself, and on top of that, you have multiple arms that each of them swings a separate katana coated with a different attack. Whether that is a different form of Sun Breath or Red Blade, this combination of abilities becomes unfair to fight against. Click on this video where we explain all 12 special bending abilities in Avatar. Go on, check it out!